To set up our static beast activation, we want to first place the hands. The hands are going to be shoulder width directly underneath the shoulders, the shoulders directly above the elbows and wrists. From here, we can set the knees. We want to make sure that the knees are just in front of the hip line, or even better yet, underneath the belly button. Once we set the knees, we can then tuck the toes underneath. We want to first set up our shoulders for the static beast position. The way that we're going to do that is we're going to first push the shoulder blades apart. So pushing them away from the spine, protracting the shoulders. Then from there, we'll actually do the exact opposite, squeeze them together or retract them. We'll do that one more time. So we'll protract, pushing them apart, then retract, pull them together, and then we're looking for the midpoint between those two points. So then we'll find midpoint or a neutral position. From then, we're going to stabilize the shoulder joint by creating a corkscrew maneuver or spiral tension. We're going to bring the pit of the elbow forward really locking in the head of the humerus into the scapulohumeral joint or into the shoulder joint itself. This creates a lot of stabilization here. From there, we'll just work our way down the spine, making sure we can maintain a flat back or a neutral spine. We'll ask Kathy to set her abdominal wall. Now, that can either mean drawing in or bracing, almost like you're gonna be punched in the stomach. As long as you can maintain a neutral spine, I don't care which technique that you use. From there, we'll squeeze the glutes, lifting the knees exactly one inch off the ground. Once the knees come off the ground, we've now activated Kathy's static beast position. From here, that's our first step, so we've activated her static beast. Now we can begin her limb lifts. We'll start with the feet first. So the idea is whenever Kathy lifts her left foot off the ground, she's gonna lift it just high enough to slide a piece of paper. Trying not to shift and or rotate. The illusion should be that nothing's changed. From there, she can drop the left foot. We would do the exact same thing with the right foot. Again, just lifting it high enough to slide a piece of paper. Again, not pushing the, the knee away or plantar flexing at the ankle. The toes should be just above the point that they are previously in contact with the ground. So here's where it gets tricky. From here, we're going to try to lift the left hand by lifting the shoulder blade up towards the sky, not by flexing the elbow, keeping the hand just high enough to slide a piece of paper. We're going to drop that hand. We're going to try the same thing with the right hand. Good. So we want to minimize any shift or rotation. Kathy's had lots of practice with this, so she looks great. Now we'll take it one step further, and we're going to try to lift the left hand and the right foot. So this is our contralateral limb lift. This really taxes our oblique systems. Then she'll drop those and do the exact same thing on the opposite side. So that's her contralateral limb lift. So we went from a six points of very stable contact to a four point, which was her static beast activation. Then we lifted her feet off of the ground first, moving to her hands, and then eventually getting to her hand and opposite foot. That's our static beast activation series.